Hi, Simon Freethy here. So the last weekend of one of the best Six Nations tournaments ever in my view. So this week's video was going to be a montage of Anton Dupont's best bits. That guy has everything, skill, strength, vision. He always makes the right decisions. He kicks off both feet. He dances his way through tackles. You know, I just can't get enough of watching him. But after the Freddie Stewart red card in the Ireland-England game, I thought I should try and shine a little bit of a light on what I think is some problems with the red card protocol process. So let's not fool ourselves. Contact sport can be dangerous. You know, there's a growing body of evidence to show that repeated knocks to the head in contact sport can lead to malfunctioning of brain or diminishing of brain functions later on in life. It's not just rugby that's got this issue, it's football, it's NFL, it's ice hockey in the States. You know, the governing body of World Rugby currently has a lawsuit against it from 225 ex-players. There's research in football that shows that defenders heading the ball more tend to suffer more in later life. And in recent years, you've had settlements in both NFL, American football in, in America and uh, ice hockey in America. Now, in the amateur game, the participants are kind of making a bit of a trade off because they recognise that it's a dangerous sport. But the health benefits of doing exercise, the stress relief they get from playing the game, the community and the enjoyment, that kind of outweighs all of that. But at the professional end, it's a different matter. You know, these guys are playing the game, gaming day in, day out. And the professional bodies have a duty of care and responsibility to make that game safe for those guys to play. And that's why we've got these red card protocols. And fantastic, that's absolutely great. We definitely need to make the game of professional sport safer. You know, in recent years, as it's gone professional, it's got much more dangerous. Guys have got quicker, fitter, faster. The impacts are just much more intense and therefore the level of potential danger has gone up dramatically. So whilst it's absolutely right that at the professional level where the game is a shop window for the rest of the sport, behaviour and uh, lack of care, which is likely to cause injury, should be punished. The problem we have at the moment is there's a rigid set of rules which are actually being interpreted inconsistently by referees. And then you end up with a situation where you've got a red card in a game which definitely affects the outcome of that match, which perhaps shouldn't have been awarded. And you've got you know, 60,000 people who paid £100 a ticket watching that game, plus all the TV revenues. And you know, there's this massive danger that the referee can spoil the spectacle without necessarily benefiting player safety. So to set some context, I thought I'd have a quick look at the other red cards that have been given out in this year's Six Nations. This first one is uh, was actually started as a yellow card, so it was on Antonio, the French prop in the Irish game. That's uh, an aggressive tackle where the guy's gone forward and he's caught him in the face with his shoulder. Now, Wayne Barnes actually gave this initially as a yellow card because he felt that the contact was initially with the chest and then went up to the head. But on review, um, it was turned into a red and he got a three match ban. <clears throat> the second one here is from the kickoff. So this is Gilchrist in the Scotland France game. And uh, that's them really going into uh, making an impression from the kickoff. But look, I mean, he's just gone too high. He's not lowered his body. It's reckless, clear red card. You know, and that's the kind of behaviour that we want to get out of the game. This next one's in the same game, and literally about five minutes later, the French prop Mohamed House just leaning over the ruck and headbutting the Scottish scrum half. Um, you know, that again, reckless head contact, fully deserving of a red card. So now we come to the Freddie Stewart red card, and I'm going to deliberately play this clip in real time. So from the ruck, Ireland again throwing some nice attacking moves, couple of loops coming round. Freddie Stewart then gets pulled up because it looks like there's going to be an overlap. He's running in from covering the backfield. Unfortunately, Mac Hansen forward pass. So the ball's kind of gone to ground and Freddie Stewart is going for that ball 
at the same time that Hugo Keenan is. What happens then is that Freddie Stewart realises he's not going to get the ball and braces for impact because he can see Hugo Keenan coming towards him, gathering the ball en route. Now, in my mind, that is completely an accidental rugby incident. There's no intention by Freddie Stewart, like the other culprits in those previous clips we've just seen. He's not, he's not even going to try to make a tackle. He's just simply defending himself against a contact. When Jaco Piper goes through the protocols, he just looks at this in slow motion and he decides that Freddie Stewart had line of sight and that he deliberately turned his shoulder. But anyone who plays rugby knows that he's just bracing for impact. This is where I think there should be additional clarification of what can be mitigating factors. So a lot of people have been talking about, well, was there intent? Intent is actually quite a difficult thing to define. But you can say, well, if the player is not actually trying to make a tackle, therefore it's not deliberate, and therefore that has to be a mitigating factor. The big mitigating factor for me is that even though Mac Hansen has thrown that ball forward onto the ground, the ball is still live, so Freddie Stewart has every right to try and go for that, and he might be on for a counter-attack. Similarly, Hugo Keenan is going for it to try and stop that counter-attack from happening, you know, it's really closer to a clash in the air from a high kick than anything else. Rugby Special also did this nice piece where they put a timer on it and showed that it was only 0.6 seconds from the ball hitting the ground to Freddie Stewart uh, having impact with Hugo Keenan. But actually, if you look at this in a slight, if you slow it down, you can see that it's about 0.3 seconds in where Hugo Keenan gets his hands on the ball so actually it's only 0.3 seconds between Freddie Stewart knowing that he's not going to get the ball and then having to try and avoid contact. It's really unfortunate that Hugo Keenan does get a knock to the head and actually then has to go off because he fails his HIA but to me this is just a rugby incident. It's an accident. So I think Jaco Piper got this one wrong but he wasn't being helped by the protocol that he has to follow. If he's in doubt, maybe he should have given Freddie Stewart a yellow card and then the sighting commission could have picked up on that later if they felt it was worth a red. Interestingly, in the Southern Hemisphere, they're currently trialling a system whereby if there's any doubt, the player gets a yellow card, he goes off for 10 minutes, and in that period, if the TMO uncovers new evidence or on review thinks that it's bad enough that can be upgraded to a red whilst the player is off the pitch which I think is probably a better way of dealing with things. So there you have it. In my view the referees need to be given clearer guidelines about what are mitigating circumstances and those circumstances of mitigation should be a bit broader than they currently are at the moment. Interestingly Matt Dawson has made the comment that there should be X players sitting in the TMO truck with the TMO to give him the benefit of their experience of how games pan out, which is certainly an option. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.